So this is the 50,000 millimeter overview of what we'll be creating here. It might look complicated down here, but the good news is we're just gonna focus first on the actual text. So we've got text and then later, if anybody's interested and I get some feedback here, I could do the, the background flames and then these little particle embers. The text part is mostly created right here. This is the background. This is the particle embers. Let's take a look. I've got a new timeline here. I'll go to it in the edit tab. I'm gonna right click new fusion composition. I'll call this fire text. Five seconds is fine. Let's create that. Now I'll drag that comp that I just made in here and click on the fusion tab. And just a word of warning here, I'm a new Fusion user, so if you see anything that doesn't make sense or I'm doing something a stupid way and there's a better way to do it, feel free to let me know. I am happy to learn. Obviously, we're gonna need some text in here. Let's click on this text button. And I'm gonna come up here, click on here. I know what I want. Unicorn Pop is a free font. You could find it online. Now let's actually see this. So I'll select this press two. You'll notice that I'm working with one viewer just for simplicity. And I'm going to move this over a little bit here. If you want to go back and forth, you can, but just note that if you're working on a small screen, some of these icons can get clipped off here. I'm going to click on this one, this text, I want to make it bigger and let's adjust the line spacing. Now I want to displace this text, just like my hip selecting this text. I'm going to press shift space bar and then type in D I S P L A displace hit return. So now we need a noise. So let's click on fast noise and connect that in here. Click on this, press two. Let's take a look at the settings here. Offset, fraction strength. We could see we're getting some distortion here. I'm going to switch to my two viewers. Now click on this, press one. Let's give a little bit more room. All right, so fast noise. Let's change the contrast up a little bit here. Adjust the brightness, give it a little bit of detail. Mess with the scale. All right, so now we're cooking with gas. And if we hit the play button, ta-da, nothing happens. So let's get some movement in here. I'm gonna adjust the seethe rate. Also adding a bit of seethe. All right, it's moving very slowly. Let's bring this rate up. All right, that's a little bit better. I think we go a bit further though. If we wanna adjust this, we can get the fire moving in one direction, but we really wanna have it moving upwards. So let's see how we can do that. I'm gonna set these values to zero and zero. That's really just to give us a clean slate to work with. I don't want to have to be worrying about keyframes on something like this in case I want to make this longer. So what I'm going to do is right click on center and click on expression. This is nice because it gives you the format here. So it's telling you it's going to put an expression on the point and it's showing you the X value and it's showing you the Y value. For this Y value, the 0.0, .0 right after the comma, let's replace 0.0, .0 with time forward slash for division time divided by a hundred. Okay. That works. So I'm going to focus back in here by clicking this icon. So I just look at one thing. Now let's take this displace and add a very blur clicking on displace, holding shift space bar B A R. And there we got it return. And let's take a look at that pressing two. So very blur is uh, very nice. If we uh, make some adjustments here, we could see it kind of gives us this rounded depth and blurring the edges. I'm also going to add a very blur on the original text. I'll just take this control C click off of it. Control V. So now we got the second one here. Let's take the original text, drag it onto the second one and let's preview that. All right. So we've got the two versions of the text, this one and this one, and I'm just going to merge them together. Let's click on merge here. Drag this one, drag this one. Let's preview this. 
The next step is to get some color in here and there's probably a better way to do this, but I'm using curves. So I'm gonna select the merge, shift space bar, color curves. So type in C-U-R-V and you should get there and press return. This window is a little tricky to work with because it goes beyond what you see here. But one thing that I found that helps is give yourself a little bit more room by dragging the interface. You at least can work a little bit easier like that. Another thing that helped me was to uncheck all the values that I'm not editing and then I'll take this, I'll move it over, try to get some red in here. I'll uncheck the red, check the green, see if you get any interesting action going on here. I'm moving this over. Let's see, maybe bend this handle. I could click and add another point. All right, now let's uncheck green. Let's check on blue. Blue, I'm gonna bring down. Maybe we could adjust the red and the green now. And I'm just gonna check them all on because now that the lines are separate, it's easier to see what's going on. Okay, yeah, we could click and drag up here. We can get some boosting up and that seems good. Let's move on to a glow. Select color curve, shift space and glow, hit turn or enter. So let's press two to preview that. I think this is looking good. I'm gonna click these three dots here and I'm gonna uncheck checker. That will we'll just be able to see this with some nice contrast. And we can take a look at the glow settings here. Should we increase the glow size? I think so. Glow, the glow glow, that's a good setting for your glow is glow. Um, all right, so that looks good. I do feel like maybe we could rough this text up a little bit more. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna find my displays. Let's see if we could change some of these settings here. Refraction strength, that's looking better. We could adjust the offset, but we wanna be careful we don't go too far with that. And if we play this, we could take a look. All right, seems to be animating well enough. Now, what I wanna do is take my original fast noise and merge it back on top of what we got here. So let's create a merge. Let's take this fast noise. So let's take this output from the fast noise and drag it into the blue mask for the merge. And let's take a look at that merge. Select it, press two on the keyboard. And what I'm gonna do is go back up to these three dots and put this underlay back just so I could know exactly what's going on. We got a merge and we got a mask on it, but we need two things. So click on my background, go from output to the merge input. And I wanna make sure this is the right order. If I right click, you can press Control T, but you could also right click on the merge, go to swap inputs. Make sure you don't have this, make sure you have this. So now we can see it's a little aggressive. And actually, let's take a look at this fast noise also. Maybe we're too high up with contrasts. Let's adjust the contrast. Contrast brightness, we could look at the scale also. As you adjust the scale, if it comes down, you might want to bring up the detail. We'll give this a play, see how it looks. I could take this background and just make things look a little bit nicer. Solid color, change that to gradient, change it to radial. Let's, uh, let's do a color swap here and this will make, I don't know, like a dark red color. I don't want this to be too bright. We'll lose our contrast. So I'll just get a kind of a really dark color here. Let's take the center point, move that. All right, now maybe that can be boosted up a little bit. Okay, and can we get this glowing even a little bit more? Let's try clicking on the merge shift space bar. Let's mix up our glows here. Let's go with the soft glow. Click that, press two to preview it. That doesn't look soft at all. All right, let's make some adjustments here. Bring this down. Messing with the threshold so that things need to be brighter before they start glowing is probably a good idea. All right, bring this maybe back up a little bit. All right, it is helping. It's a nice little extra touch there. And if that's working, we could try one more. Let's click on this. Soft glow, shift space bar. Just do the regular glow again. Click this, press two. All right, let's make some adjustments here. Actually, let's go into the color settings and see what happens when we start adjusting some of these colors. So you can get some interesting results. 
and kind of shift some contrast around. Now this is way too much, but if we want, we can just dial back the blend here and adjust some of these settings. And we don't want to forget, connect this to our media out. I'll just select that, press two. We could do a little render here. Okay, so we've got our text on fire and that is fun. One thing I don't understand is it seems like it's going on the regular 60 frames per second and then at the end it starts to go slower, but it looks like it's all loaded into RAM, so I don't know why it slows down at the end there. But uh, if anybody has any ideas, I'd be happy to uh, hear about that. Once you've got this set up, remember to go back into any of your settings here and see what kind of other results you get if you go back here and say, you know, adjust the scale down, you get a different look there. Uh, like if you want to do a cartoony type effect, you could do that. Okay, let's change the scale back here. Also, obviously, change your text, change your font. Actually, that's kind of interesting. So you can see that there's a lot of fun, a lot of flexibility you can have when playing with fire.